good morning students today we will discuss about expression of recombinant proteins all this while while discussing about uh, production of recombinant dna molecule first we discussed uh, we need to isolate the gene of interest and then um, we have to uh, select the right uh, cloning vector and then your gene of interest will be inserted into the cloning vector then recombinant dna molecule is produced then this recombinant dna molecule will be transformed into suitable host organism then we have the methods for the selection of transformants by using different selectable markers once the positive clones are selected then we expand them so this is all we do for increasing the concentration of your uh, gene of interest but if at all you are interested in expressing your protein that means the protein which is produced by your gene of interest if you are interested in expressing that protein we have to go for the expression vectors expression vectors are the ones that supports the expression of the gene which is cloned isn't it and earlier we have also studied the properties and uh, different examples how these expression vectors work all those things we have studied both for prokaryotes as well as eukaryotes now in today's class we will be seeing like what are the different expression systems that are available if you want to express your protein of interest okay so let's start with the uh, different expression systems available for the expression of your protein so the content what we will be discussing in today's class is uh, the factors one second so the factors uh, which we need to consider when we go for the expression of recombinant protein then what are the different uh, protein expression systems available we have bacterial protein expression system then yeast protein expression system we also have insect cell expression system then mammalian cell expression system depending depending upon the type of protein you are trying to express we have different types of these expression systems and then at the end we will also see what are the advantages and disadvantages of each of these expression system so as i told you uh, to consider the factors while expressing your protein of interest so what are the uh, factors that need to be considered the first one is how much amount of protein is needed depending upon that you have to select the right expression system then uh, it also depends on the mass of the protein you are trying to express and the protein of interest if it has to undergo post translational modification in that case the expression system what you choose will uh, need to be appropriate that means especially if you remember eukaryotic proteins they undergo post translational modification once it is synthesized so depending upon the type of protein you need to choose the right expression system the expression system whatever you select that should support the post translational modification of the protein and then it also depends on the destination of the expressed protein similarly the time required in expressing the protein and how easy to handle the expression system you cannot go for complicated expression systems you always have to look for the expression systems that are easy to handle so when you want to express the recombinant protein it requires few uh, steps to be followed or the following information or components are required when you want to express your protein of interest so what are they first you need to identify the gene which encodes your protein of interest obviously you should be knowing the gene that can express your protein of interest and then once that is identified you can generate the cdna from the respective mrna and then once the cdna is formed you have to select the suitable expression vector in which you can insert your gene of interest and then you have to go for the selection of suitable system 
So once the expression vector is selected, then the next step is you have to uh, select the right expression system, which is capable of expressing your protein of interest. Then appropriate screening, scaling up procedures will be followed. So these are all the steps or the information which is required when you go for the expression of your protein of interest. So these steps are mentioned here, as I mentioned, uh, first the gene of interest that needs to be identified, then uh, the full length cDNA needs to be produced, then you have to insert this into expression vector, then that expression vector will be cloned into suitable expression system. This is where you need to choose the right expression system depending upon the type of protein you are trying to express. Then you go for screening the positive clones. Then select the best expression host. It could be the expression host could be bacteria, yeast, or it could be insect cell. So one by one, all these different expression systems we are going to discuss. So once you select the best construct or expression host, you can go for scaling up procedure. Then after scaling up, you can isolate and purify your protein of interest. If it is mammalian cells also, you have to expand the transient or stable transfactants. See, if you go, if you go to a mammalian cell expression system, depending upon the cell line, it may be a transient expression system. That means only for the temporary expression of protein or it may be the stable expression system. That means for the longer periods of time, the protein is expressed. And then after that, you can go for cell-based study. So this, this is the, uh, I mean, flow in which we uh, carry out this expression of recombinant protein using different uh, protein expression systems. First, let's discuss about bacterial protein expression system. So anytime uh, we, when we discuss about uh, bacterial protein expression system or anything uh, prokaryotic system, obviously we go with the simplest bacteria E. coli. We know the reason because the genetic system is very simple, well-established genetic information is available and for the cloning also, the very well established and standard methods are available. The organism is easy to handle and its uh, doubling time is very short. So these are all the reasons why we go with E. coli when we uh, go for bacterial protein expression system. So as I mentioned, the most widely used host system is E. coli uh, because the genetic manipulation is easy and it also grows to high densities of course, it is suitable for large scale fermentations, but there are certain disadvantages like the cell wall of E. coli, it contains uh, toxic uh, pyrogens. And in that case, the expressed proteins may have to be uh, extensively tested before they are released for usage. So this is the diagrammatic representation Whatever we have discussed, it is mentioned here. Uh, as I told you, first, we go with the transformation of competent E. coli with the gene of interest, the transformation of uh, uh, the competent E. coli. You all know what, what do I mean by competent, making the cells ready for the transformation. The cells which are ready for transformation are called competent cells. So they would be able to take up the external DNA. Then you have to select the transformed cells. So uh, the selection and expansion of positive clones, this is carried out based on selectable markers like your antibiotics. So once this is done, uh, the recombinant plasmid from the positive clone can be isolated. That means uh, here recombinant uh, uh, molecule in the sense, uh, the expression vector in which your gene of interest is incorporated, then uh, it will be scaled up. Uh, it will be expanded, uh, scale up of transformants, and then once it is uh, scaled up, then you would be able to isolate your protein of interest. So this is how 
uh, the expression of recombinant protein in a suitable expression system like your bacteria here we have taken e coli as an example first transformation uh, then uh, selection of transformants then isolation of uh, recombinant dna molecule why here we are going to uh, incorporate or if we are going to transfer this recombinant dna molecule into the other uh, host organism because it could be any organism here we are talking about e coli as expression system so again this would be uh, e coli otherwise uh, any time the uh, you know the initial steps of cloning we carry out using e coli once the recombinant molecule is produced and we uh, you know uh, select the right uh, recombinant molecule then uh, we transform it into suitable expression system why because most of the uh, expression vectors what we develop are shuttle vectors why they are developed as shuttle vectors because the initial procedures can be carried out using the e coli as host organism which is easy for us once the uh, genetic manipulation is done and its uh, integrity is checked then later for the expression we can put it into the right expression system so that is what after selecting the uh, right recombinant dna molecule then you can transform into the uh, expression uh, system there we can go for scaling up and from there we can carry out isolation of our protein of interest are you able to follow if you have any questions till now you can ask students are you there yes ma'am yes ma'am mudit mudit has a question i believe he raised his hand you can ask me mudit mudit or simply you raise the hand mudit are you there i have seen the notification that mudit dugar raised his hand but he is not speaking anything okay let me think that he has an issue uh, in his audio or whatever i am proceeding further we discussed about uh, expression of our protein of interest using e coli as an expression system whatever is discussed in the flow chart diagram uh, it is repeated here once we uh, quickly once again we can go through this information uh, we have to first use the competent e coli cells to take up the dna sequence of interest that is just the transformation then when uh, the transformed dna in the host organism that may get integrated into the bacterial genome or uh, the circularization of the dna sequence might exist as a plasmid and then you can go for the selection of transformed e coli for this we use the selection markers then once the uh, transformants are selected you have to go for the expansion of selected e coli to scale up the dna then from there you can go for isolation and purification of protein whether it is uh, intracellular or the secreted protein the next expression system the simplest expression system for eukaryotes is uh, yeast yeast protein expression system so any time when we talk about uh, eukaryotic uh, organisms the simplest eukaryotic organism that can be considered is uh, yeast saccharomyces cerevisiae uh, why we uh, choose yeast as the sim simplest organism or the model eukaryotic organism for any kind of study is that because uh, it has got a uh, well developed genetic system and it is easy to use uh, and uh, the cost of the study is also less that is how the saccharomyces cerevisiae uh, becomes an attractive organism for the expression and the production of uh, the recombinant proteins this uh, there are several plasmids we have studied which are suitable 
for yeast what are those plasmids are the vectors we have studied that are suitable for yeast what are the yeast yeast vectors let me not say expression otherwise also what are the vectors we have studied for yeast i want to listen from you it has become you know completely one way come talk go hmm shall i call the name to answer ashwati yes ma'am you got the question what i have asked Huh? Did you get the question? What I have asked? They are discussing about yeast protein expression systems, yes, right? In the previous class, we discussed. I mean, pre not in the previous class. In the beginning of the, uh, I think first semester. Uh, I mean to say, first unit, we discussed about different types of vectors. There, we discussed about. the vectors which can be used for yeast hmm? having uh, you haven't studied about bacteria uh, sorry yeast artificial chromosome yes hmm? yes yes ma'am yeast epizomal plasmids right later you also studied about cloning in eukaryotes there again we discussed about the vectors right yeast transformation we discussed that time we discussed about vectors that are used for yeast several times i have been telling that recombinant dna technology so many topics you know the overlapping information will be discussing again and again so when i ask the question if you are not able to answer then what does it mean hmm? not studying i am not telling this to one person all any question is asked no noise no sound at all hmm? not for the sake of exams and not for that you know i am asking you have to answer you have to learn the subject right anyway uh, please be attentive and keep following whatever we have been uh, discussing otherwise it's of no use waste waste of time from your side and from my side all right so yeast protein expression system as i told you the simplest eukaryotic organism yeast uh, is used because of its uh, developed genetic system because of the you know ease of handling and uh, uh, experimental cost is less these are all the reasons why we take yeast as a model organism for the study of any eukaryotic studies then uh, there are several vectors which can be used for yeast the yeast vectors are yeast epizomal plasmid i'm sure you are all aware of this yeast epizomal plasmid so these are the expression vectors which can be transformed into the yeast as expression system yeast integrating plasmid this yeast integrating plasmid is used when you want to integrate your gene of interest into the host genome then yeast centromeric plasmid example complement uh, it is used in complementation studies yeast epizomal plasmid it is used for replicating multi copies of the plasmid again we will not be discussing about the properties of these vectors because already we are done with this portion so here what are the steps when we use the yeast as expression system first the transformation of competent e coli with your gene of interest then selection and expansion of positive clones you please understand first as i told you the initial steps are carried out using e coli as host organism the reason is again simple doing the genetic manipulation using e coli as host organism is always simple and we have got well established standard methods and once the recombinant molecule is produced then it can be transformed into suitable expression system where it can undergo the all required uh, 
modifications so the initial steps are done using the uh, e coli as host organism so first the transformation of competent e coli with gene of interest then you go for the selection and expansion of positive clone then once uh, the transformants are selected you have to isolate the right plasmid that means the recombinant plasmid uh, what do i mean by right plasmid always you remember here at this step you can also have the religated vector not only the recombinant plasmid the transformants could have taken up the religated vector which is the uh, more potential or possible uh, you know side reaction product that is formed during ligation so you need to distinguish the transformant having the recombinant plasmid then you can isolate the plasmid or the expression vector then you uh, go for transformation of yeast the trans i mean the yeast cells will take up the uh, recombinant plasmid so this is the expression system you are interested in where you want to express your protein of interest so once the yeast cells are transformed then you can go for the selection and scaling up procedure thereby you can do the isolation of your protein of interest isolation and purification of protein of interest as i uh, discussed in the previous uh, diagram first we use the competent e coli cells to take up the dna of interest it might these are all repetition points when we have seen the e coli as expression system also these are the steps we have seen here also the steps are same so the transformed dna might get integrated with the host genome here i am talking about the bacterial genome because in the beginning we do the manipulation using e coli isn't it so it may get integrated with the bacterial genome or it might exist as a plasmid go for the selection of transformants then expand the transformed uh, clones then isolation of dna or plasmid then you go for transformation into yeast then screen the transformants for integration of dna into yeast chromosomes then scaling up procedure selection and scaling up procedure uh, scaling up of highly expressing yeast clones in the appropriate medium then you can go for isolation and purification of your protein of interest it could be intracellular or the secreted protein secreted protein in the sense extracellular protein next we need to discuss about insect cell expression systems let me just check the time yeah we have time so insect cell expression systems so what are the vectors we have discussed that are suitable for insect cell lines as expression system as host cell what are the vectors that we have discussed that are suitable for insect cell lines i am very sure that none of you are studying i think it's time to give a test okay the cell lines that are derived from the organism spodoptera of rugipeda the examples of such cell lines are sf9 sf21 they are frequently used as recombinant protein expression system so these two sf9 and sf21 are the insect cell lines that are derived from spodoptera Uji perda, they are used as recombinant protein expression system. The vector which is used for this insect cell lines are baculovirus vector. Okay, that is not new for you. Earlier, while discussing about different types of vectors, I discussed about baculovirus vector. It's a lytic double-stranded DNA. These are the steps. that are involved in using insect cell lines as expression system first e coli only will be used for the preliminary manipulation 
E. coli is used for transformation with your gene of interest. Then selection and expansion of positive clone. Then we go for the isolation of the recombinant plasmid. So here, while transfecting this recombinant plasmid into the host cell line, that is insect cell line, we also go with another plasmid that has got few viral genes. Co-transfection of insect cell lines. So the insect cell lines that are used are SF9 and SF21. When this co-transfection is carried out, that will lead to the production of high titer recombinant virus stock. Then we, when this high titer recombinant virus stock is formed, we can infect the cell lines with this high titer recombinant virus stock, which would produce your protein of interest that can be isolated and purified. So this is how the insect cell lines are used as protein expression system. And usually this insect cell lines and also the later we'll be studying about another expression system that is mammalian cell lines. These are generally used for the expression of uh, eukaryotic protein because you cannot use the bacteria as expression system because these eukaryotic proteins, as I told you earlier, after they are synthesized, they undergo several post-translational modifications, which is not supported by bacterial expression system. Any questions still here? I'll continue in the next class. I'll stop here. And then if you have any questions, I'll take up and then uh, we will note the attendance.